Welcome to our Five on Five. We're pleased to be joined by author Hampton Sides speaking tonight at the Southern Oregon Arts and Lecture Series courtesy of the Jackson County Library Foundation. This event is going on tonight. I know we've had some weather of late. It's at 7.30 at the new South Medford Auditorium. Hampton, that's quite a long intro. Thanks for being here. Yeah, it's good to be here. <laughs> so tell us, uh, what are you planning to talk about tonight? Well, I'm going to talk about my different books. I've written three histories, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the process of writing narrative history and how it kind of differs from conventional or, or academic history, um, and, and sort of my influences uh, lead, that led, led to this career of mine. So uh, I've, I've written three um, histories, that uh, one of which has a, a local tie-in here that, yeah, that originally brought me to... Uh, to, uh, to Medford. There was a, an amazing gentleman named Ralph Emerson Hibbs who was a survivor of the Bataan Death March. And uh, I was writing a book about uh, a raid that happened late in the war that rescued the last survivors of the Death March. And he was one of the, the guys, he ended up being a major character in the book, and we became great friends. He died, unfortunately, shortly thereafter. And uh, I think it's, uh, you know, it's about probably the last time I was here in Medford. And how long ago was that? Uh, 2001 is when the book okay. came out. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and tell us what it was like uh, interviewing uh, Mr. Hibbs in, in this fascinating story. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I think when you're able to actually interview someone who was there, who experienced these uh, atrocities, in his case, he was a doctor. He uh, treated a lot of these really bizarre illnesses and maladies that the, the uh, veterans suffered because they weren't eating, you know, good food for sure. three years and they were, uh, they were basically starving. And so he had uh, this incredible kind of uh, strange knowledge about uh, what happens to the human body when, when it breaks down over three years like that and had some really bizarre, gruesome tales to tell. But, but somehow through all that, he, was, uh, he had a great sense of humor and uh, was able to uh, get, gain some perspective on the whole experience. And he, uh, he didn't hate Japanese people or anything like that. In fact, he had a... Uh, uh, an exchange student from Japan who uh, really? uh, he, he it was like very important for him to get over this and not sort of blame an entire nation for something that happened during wartime so great wow. man sounds like it excellent yeah. All right, well, we're gonna take a quick break we'll have much more with Hampton in just a moment stay with us Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here with author Hampton Sides speaking tonight at the Southern Oregon Arts and Lecture Series at the new South Medford High School. 7.30, the event is on. All this weather, not a problem. Hampton's here and we're taking care of this. Uh, what's the most important advice you would give to another writer? Uh, not to give up on your ideas. Uh, I think, you know, in the early stages of writing a book, there's a tendency to think, well, this is just not going to work. It, it's, it's, uh, but if you have that gut feeling, this is going to, you know, this is something I'm going to do no matter what, uh, and not giving up on it uh, over, you know, it takes two, three, four, five years to write a book. Yeah. It's uh, something you have to do for your own reasons because you love it and because uh, you you have a sense deep inside yourself that that this is going to work. So don't give up on yourself, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and Ghost Soldiers, like we were talking about, uh, it can't be easy to combine an exciting storyline with factual history. How do you manage that? Mm. Well, you got you got to read and read and read and read. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it, you got to have a little bit of kind of masochism <laughs> because yeah. you got to read so much and then sort of uh, triangulate that information with interviews and travel. And, and uh, if you're trying to do narrative history, which is a little bit different, you know, also trying to kind of make it come alive on the page and hopefully... Uh, uh, sell, because yeah. <laughs> so it's always nice when people actually buy the books and read sure. the books. Uh, it, you have to spend a lot of time with the writing itself, making it really flow and, and structuring it in a way that works. So um, it's, it's just a lot of work, and uh, you got to do it because you love it. Mm -hmm. And does the narrative approach uh, factor into that at all? Tell us, tell us our viewers uh, what that is. Well, I mean, you know, narrative history really aspires to... Um, to, to make readers turn pages. It's basically, uh, you know, I think a lot of academic history um, can be deadly dull. It has a kind of reputation for being dull. I think a lot of us who took history in, in high school kind of remember it as, you know, just the recitation of a lot of facts and figures sure. and dates. Dates, yeah. Uh, and it's not always that <laughs> fun. Uh, but narrative, narrative aspires to tell a story. And, and in order to do that, you have to have strong characters and strong setting and good plot and find stories that uh, kind of stories within stories uh, so that um, hopefully the reader doesn't even know he or she is, uh, is reading history. It's just mm -hmm. a good tale. Excellent. All right. Well, you, you've written books. You're, you're involved with Outside Magazine, National Geographic, The New Yorker. The list goes on and on. Yeah. What's been your greatest thrill in your career? Well, I think that um, the best thing is when you write something and sort of the commu communication comes full circle, it comes back at you. Um, in, in Ghost Soldiers, the World War II book, uh, 
meeting people on the book tour who were there. A guy came up to me and said, you see that guy on the, on the, on the cover of your book? That's my dad. And that wow. kind of thing, with tears in his eyes. You know, wow. uh, when you realize that you're writing you know, just a story, as we're talking about, but it's actually rooted in real life, and uh, these are events that changed people and uh, shaped their lives for, forever. Uh, when, those come, th when those people come back and, and sort of remind you that it's, it's a form of communication that's, that's come full circle, it's, mm -hmm. it's really rewarding. A powerful moment. Yeah. Hampton, thank you so thank much you, for being here. All right. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. 7.30 tonight, the new South Medford Auditorium. Stay with us. We'll be right back.